Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. All right, the next thing we want to talk about is combinations. In the context of counting problems, subsets, where the order of elements makes no difference, are often called combinations. The number of combinations of n things taken r at a time is denoted ncr, although you'll often hear me say n choose r. So let's compare combinations to permutations. The problem, find the number of subsets of size 2 of the set a, b, c. A subset has no particular order of the elements. So for example, one subset of size 2 is the subset a, b. This is a set that has two of the elements in the set a, b, c. But I could also have written it as b, comma, a, and those really are the same subset. So the order does not matter. When order does not matter, you're just looking for a subset, then you can use a combination. On the other hand, if I asked you to find the number of two-letter words composed of the letters A, B, C, if repetition of letters is not allowed, that's asking you to arrange them, right? So we might have, now word is in quotes because this isn't really a word perhaps, but we might have the word ack or we might have the word ka and those are two different words. The order does matter. So when the order, order does not matter, you're using a combination. Order does not matter. It's a combination. It's a subset. But when order matters, this is a permutation situation. Specifically, how many words could be formed from this set assuming that we are not allowed to repeat, because remember that also is a condition of permutations. We have three letters to choose from. We're choosing and arranging two of them. So 3P2 would be the number of uh, possible words. That would be 3 factorial over 3 minus 2 factorial, which would be 3 times 2 times 1 over 1 factorial is 1, so you would have 6 possible words. The relationship between the number of subsets and the number of possible words is interesting. There are only 3 possible subsets of the set ABC the subset containing a and b, the one containing a and c, and the one containing b and c. Since the order doesn't matter, there's no need to reverse that and have a b a subset, a c a subset, and a c b subset. But on the other hand, when we're constructing words where the order matters, we have twice as many possibilities. We have the a b, the a c, and the b c, but because order matters, we have the number of ways to arrange two letters, which is two ways, right? So that could be A, B, or B, A. This one could be A, C, or C, A. This one's B, C, or C, B. All of these are different possible permutations of two of the letters from that set. So in fact, the number of combinations could be calculated by dividing the number of permutations, 3, P, 2, divided by the number of ways to arrange two letters, which is 2 times 1, or 2 factorial. This gave us 3C2. And this holds true in general, meaning that if you want to calculate NCR, you can take NPR and divide it by R factorial. So the, the formula for NCR is obtained by dividing NPR by R factorial, and it ends up looking like this. N factorial divided by R factorial times N minus R factorial. So let's evaluate each combination using a formula. So 5C3, again the formula is NCR equals N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. So substituting 5 in for the n and 3 in for the r, we get 5 factorial over 3 factorial times 5 minus 3 factorial, which is 5 factorial over 3 factorial times 2 factorial. So you might wonder where are they getting this 10 from, but if you write it out, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1, write out each of the factorials, you'll see that a lot of things cancel. 5 times 2 is 10. Um, by the way, this will always turn out to be a whole number. 
And then look what we get for 6C6. So if N is 6 and R is 6, we're selecting all six objects from a set of six objects. So notice that there's only one way to do it. So it makes sense that it would turn out to be one. Now let's look at what happens on our calculator. We want to calculate 17C10. So we're going to type 17 and then we're going to select the PRB. And in the PRB menu, this time we're going to have to arrow to the right to underline the NCR. And so you're going to see 17 NCR. You type 10 and hit enter and you get 19,448, which is so much smaller. Remember when we did 17 P10, it came out to be billions because the combinations with the same N and R always are much smaller than the permutations with the same numbers because we're not counting how many ways to arrange them. We select the objects, which is just one part of what you're doing in a permutation. And we don't then go ahead and arrange them. So it's always going to be smaller than the corresponding permutation. All right, let's look at an example. Find the number of different subsets of size 3. When you see subsets, you're going to think combination. Subsets of size 3 in the set Math Rocks. So this set has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine elements in it. Important note though, we would not be able to use combinations in a problem that where repetitions are allowed, but repetitions are never allowed when you're calculate when you're constructing subsets. And also order is not important, so we're good to go. So we have nine letters and we're selecting three of them. So that gives us nine C3. You can plug into the formula or you can find it on your calculator and it should turn out to be 84. A lot of the questions that we're going to look at involve playing cards. So I like to go over the contents of a standard 52 card deck of cards because a lot of people have not played with playing cards very much and they might not know about this. So there are four suits. Diamonds, clubs, spades, and hearts are the four suits. There are 13 in each suit. These are called denominations that run from 1 up to 13, but the number 1 card is called an ace and it has an A on it. The number 11 card is called a jack and it has a J on it. The number 12 card is called a queen and it has uh, a Q on it. And the number 13 card is called a king and it has a K on it. The Jack, Queen, and King all have faces on them, so they're referred to often as face cards. Now, in a 52 card playing card set, each card is unique. No two are exactly the same. We do have four of each denomination. For example, we have four sevens. They're each a different suit. So with that in mind, let's look at a question that involves playing cards. It says a common form of poker involves hands, which are sets of five cards each dealt from a deck consisting of 52 different cards. How many different five card hands are possible? Okay, so first of all, let's think about um, why this is actually a combinations problem. So when you ask yourself the question, does order matter? The answer has to be no, because when you're dealt cards and you're holding cards in your hand, it doesn't matter in what order you're holding the cards, right? Or in what order you receive them. All that matters is that you have them to construct your hand. So order does not matter in a hand of cards. The other question is, is repetition allowed? And the answer to that one is also no. Anytime you're talking about a standard deck of playing cards, we never have repetition because all the cards are unique. So when you have those two conditions satisfied and you're selecting 52 from 50, a set of cards, 52 cards, you're selecting five of them, then we have a combination, 52C5. So if you look on your um, calculator or plug into the formula, you'll see that 52C5 is actually 2,598,960. That's how many different poker hands there are in five card poker. Now, if your calculator can't perform the calculation and give you an exact answer, you can go ahead and write out the factorials and cancel out what you can, and eventually you'll get down to the same solution. 
Okay, so now that we've talked about permutations and combinations, let's review the similarities and the differences. So first, the similarities. In both permutations and combinations, we're looking for the number of ways of selecting R items out of N items. And repetitions are not allowed in either of these calculations. But then there's the differences. For permutation, the order is important, whereas in combinations, the order is not. Another word for permutation is arrangement, which implies that the order is important. And another word for combination is subset, and we know that in subsets, the order is not. The formula for permutation is NPR equals N factorial over N minus R factorial. And the formula for combinations is n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. But probably the most important thing is the clue words that are going to tell you whether you have a permutation or a combination. Arrangement, schedule, order are all words that are clue words that you'll see in permutation problems. Also, anytime you have categories, for example, if you're voting on officers for a club and we're going to select three people, one to serve as president, one to serve as secretary, and one to serve as, say, treasurer, then the order matters. It's different to select John as the president versus John as the treasurer. Same thing for when you have first place, second place, third place, and so on. Anytime there is a category or distinct prizes, then it matters who gets what. You have a permutation as long as the other conditions are also met. On the other hand, when you see words like group, sample, selection, committee, or hand of cards, these are all situations where the order is not important. Here's another problem solving hint. Many counting problems involve selecting some of the items from a given set of items. The particular conditions of the problem determine which specific technique to use. For example, if the selected items have repetition, you have no choice but to use the fundamental counting principle. If the selected items cannot be repeated and order is important, then you're going to use permutations. If the selected items cannot be repeated and order is not important, then you're going to use combinations. This is from our My Math Lab homework in my class. From a standard 52 card deck, how many six card hands will have four spades and two hearts? As soon as you see that we're talking about dealing hands of cards, what should pop into your head is that it doesn't matter the order that I hold the cards in my hand, hands of cards are a combination situation. However, we also have two categories of types of cards that we're selecting. We're going to select four spades and then we're going to also select two hearts. Whenever you have categories like that, different categories implies fundamental counting principle. So what you're going to do is you're going to use combinations to count the number of ways to count the spades and you're going to use combinations to count the number of ways to count the hearts and then we're going to multiply that product together the number of ways to do the first part of the task times the number of ways to do the second part. So if you're watching this video you might try pausing and seeing if you can come up with a solution. Don't be afraid to take a guess at least you'll see if your instincts are right. So we're breaking this down into parts of the task. Part one, selecting the four spades. There are 13 spades in a deck of 52 cards, and we're selecting four of them. So that's 13 C4. For part two, there are two hearts that we want to select out of the 13 hearts in the deck, 13 C2. By the fundamental counting principle then, we can multiply the number of ways to complete the first part of the task by the number of ways to complete the second. Using your calculator or a formula, you can find that 13C4 is 715 and 13C2 is 78. Multiplying those together, we get 55,770 ways to construct a six card hand that will have four spades and two hearts. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That'll help other students to find the video.